Your food here is terrific. Uh, Moe's is a nice place to come and eat here downtown. And Mo is a, a, a great guy. You'll love the tacos. Tell us who you are. Sure. <laughs> um, well, I'm John Guevara. I've been on the Winnebago County Board. Uh, the first uh, time I served was from Rockford uh, from 2010 to 2016. Um, since moved to Roscoe um, and uh, was elected in 2022. And my term ends um, in December of 2024 um, this year. So I've, I've been... Uh, a public servant, uh, servant in Winnebago County, both from the city of Rockford and outside of it. Um, I've been uh, active in uh, local politics for um, more two and a half decades, and uh, that's been a lot of fun. Um, and also just kind of serving the community as a, a jack of all trades, uh, helping folks out. Um, wasn't originally from um, the Rockford area. My family's not. They're actually from Mexico. Um, my grandfather uh, came to the U.S. Uh, as the result. It, his dad um, was murdered by uh, oh my gosh. by folks in, in Mexico because he spoke out against uh, some of the um, rebels who were in controlling his region in Guanajuato, and um, they you know murdered him in, in response. And then the army came in and says, "Hey, you know, we need to." draft young people and, and get them into into service. I think my grandfather was 15, 16. Hmm. And he said, let me go say goodbye to my mother. You know, oh my like the implication being that he was going to join up with the army. Um, and, and instead, he uh, he came as a, as a refugee to the U.S. because his brother was working in Chicago. And so uh, he started uh, up there in Chicago and then migrated uh, working uh, on uh, for the railroad. Uh, to Savannah, Illinois, uh, before settling in Sterling um, at National Steel. Um, and he worked uh, rotating shifts, first, second, third, every week um, for until he retired in his 60s. Um, so that's a, a little bit of my history. My family is from Sterling, um, but I was born in Chicago because they, they took jobs in the suburbs after, after college. And uh, uh, they'd been married for almost a year, and I um, w- went to go to work, and they said, hey, everything's great. You guys have great health benefits. Everything's wonderful. But the baby is a pre-existing condition. He's You're six months along. He's coming four days after your first wedding anniversary. That's uh, definitely a pre-existing condition. So my folks were, they lived in Buffalo Grove and found a hospital in Chicago that would take payments um, to d- deliver me. And uh, that's why I was born in the city. Um, so you're a finance baby on a, a payment um, plan. You know, what's interesting was about three years later, um, my dad started getting letters from the hospital. I think he'd been bought by the Advocate uh, Health System at the time. And they were sending letters saying, hey, we need you to sign this paper so we can charge you interest. Oh, on oh. <laughs> and he kept throwing them in the shredder. It's been 45 <laughs> years. They haven't re- re- uh, you know, repossessed me yet, so I think we're okay. <laughs> But uh, I have some bad jokes that I can't even <laughs> oh, he re- repossess babies. Oh. That's something else. Okay, so so there's there's a significant tr- family trauma there, and I see a driving force for uh, public justice that uh, you know you want to do good in the world and do right, and that that's part of why you're here. You know, I, I I've known you for several years, not not super close, but uh, we've done a video for your campaigning before mm-hmm. uh, with a fellow fellow friend and filmmaker. And uh, just tell us about how, how John Guevara can make the world a better place and what we can do to support you or kind of thing. That's that's what I'm all about, helping people, helping build community. And uh, I'll just pass the mic from there. Uh, Laura, by the way, I think there's speakers in the control room. You can turn up the volume so you guys could monitor and hear as well, if you want to. No, I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, and, and yeah, the, the start of my uh, focus on, on public service really... Um, I didn't know it began with um, the health uh, issues, um, you know, 45 years ago. But um, as I, uh, you know, grew up, I grew up in, in the 80s, uh, and, and you, you know, you're hiding under your desk still. There was a significant fear of, um, you know, the communism and, and Soviet control and the word Soviet. I don't think people know now, but it shaped um, the way that I thought about the world. And... Um, just created an emphasis in in inside of me to say, hey, control is 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 dangerous, and um, freedom is preferable. So, you know, it, as I as it, those were the the driving forces as a child. Um, 
I went away to school uh, at Princeton, um, uh, and after four years of that, gave him every opportunity to kind of change my mind on where you know on who I was, where I came from, what I believed, um, and changed how I approach things. I think I think it it helped to learn how to have a discussion about things. Um, and in your twenties, that's helpful because you know if you don't learn how to how to talk to people. It, it, um, you know, you can end up in a bad spot. And we see some of that with, um, you know, the, the protests that, that, that have gone on and even in the last year. Um, and, and certainly the protests that went on um, in 2020 um, and a lot of the violence that ensued is folks not knowing how to speak to each other. And I'm fortunate in that the way that I was trained, both by my parents and then through high school and, and into college, helped me. Uh, focus on solutions and, and how do we bring people together um, in a, an increasingly tribal society it's interesting because folks are like well if you if you compromise if you are trying to bring people together you're effectively don't you don't stand for anything mm. that's not the case you can stand for things and, and try to um, advocate a position um, but at the same time you know it, it becomes a game of inches instead of you know just trying to throw, 80 yard passes all the time the team that does that doesn't win anything yeah you know and um viewing it as winning or losing for your tribe i think is part of the problem um you know the reason why a show there's this, the show on there was on hbo called the newsroom and the first five minutes of the show resonated deeply with millennials i mean i, I was serving on the county board in 2014 and 2016 rolls along. The show, I think, aired first in 2012. And I had, you know, one of these young kids he pulls me aside and says, "Have you seen this? This is this is what I think is 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 wrong with the world, and what we can do to change it." And it was the the first scene of that of that TV show where he just talks about, um, you know, we are more divided now than we have ever been. We've got. Um, it, we're, we're in a terrible spot. So you're asking yeah. us why America is the greatest country in the world. I don't know what you're talking about because we're not achieving anything and all we're doing is fighting. And we used to be something different than that. And he's, he's talking about the America that, you know, that built the railroads, the America that built the interstate highway system, the America that defeated communism in the 80s, and something changed. And the interesting part is my education was such that I ended up aligned with that speech. Um, and that second half of that, uh, uh, of that. So I get to be in my service. My focus is how do we move past what the divisions are and recognize that the things that unite us are greater than the things that divide us and move forward. So absolutely. How do we push the dial forward? Um, what can folks, folks at home in Rockford, Illinois do to get educated, become aware. So they're not arguing over things that they may not be educated on. Because I, I, my, my personal opinion, people are quick to talk before they actually do the research. And you're one of the few people that actually is educated on a lot of local politics and, and knows what they're talking about. No, I appreciate that. And, and, and most of the time, folks want, want an answer to a problem that is immediate. Like, I've got a pothole at the end of my driveway. I, I need this fixed. Yeah. Um, and there's no easy answer because, you know, Illinois has got over 9,000 different governments that operate um, between municipalities and townships and 9, counties. 9,000? 9,000 different taxing entities. I mean, in, in Winnebago County alone, you've got your, your townships, you've got all of the municipalities, you've got what? the county government, mental health board levies a tax and, and, and operates as a unit of government. You've got the airport authority, which levies a tax and operates as a okay. unit of government. Um, you've got um, the sanitation authority that operates as a unit of government. So there's there are, um, like North Park uh, Fire, is a unit of government. Um, the board is appointed by the county board, okay. Um, but it it can levy its own taxes and operate, and it's got a mandate to stop fires within its its jurisdiction. So, you've got thousands of different entities of government, and it might be any one of five that are responsible for the pothole at the end of your street. How do you know who to call? Who are you gonna call? You know, so and then that's me. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so the potholes, um, they get directed to you. Just, you know, if, if you've got a question, if something's come up, if you want to know where your polling place is, and, and you, either, there are two different election authorities in Winnebago County, the county clerk and the city of Rockford election authority. If you live in Rockford, but you're not in the city of Rockford, and you don't realize your polling place might be different than if you live in the city of Rockford. 
um, just give me a call. I can look it up and help you. Um, or visit johnmgavara.org um, or .com and just uh, you'll have my cell phone number there. Um, I do post some resources, but really it's just a place where people can get my phone number hmm. and uh, and call me and I can just help them with whatever they need. I'm all about efficiency and solutions and, and helping people. And I kind of see the, the drudgery in your eyes when you're talking about like pothole because maybe this gets released and then your phone explodes in your pocket because everyone's like, hey, John, I got a pothole. Uh, what can we do as far as social media with your brand or your name? Because I noticed you, you do have some TikTok content that, mm -hmm. that we'll link to. Um, just an idea, maybe like the next uh, frequently asked question, like if potholes are a huge thing document that process. I'm happy to bring my camera and tell the story. This is how you fix a pothole at Rockford, Illinois mm -hmm. and in your local government. And maybe that stuff would trend because like to me, that's super valuable and useful because it saves people time, saves energy, saves frustration and headaches. What's your thoughts on doing some, some little, little TikTok stories that show, in you the, know, easy common stuff that will save everybody time. Yeah. In the, the way that um, you're describing it, the the, the way that I, I've been thinking about doing it since since we started talking is to post a video of what the clicks look like. So you go and you plug in your address, and you can figure out whether you're where you are. You know, it's, are mm -hmm. you in the city? Or are you in, in unincorporated Winnebago County, but within the city limits? So you're Rockford Township, but you're not city of Rockford. Yeah, that's um, step one. That's so. So that's step one, and then um, you can figure out who owns your road. Um, and there's different websites to figure that out because in the city of Rockford, one of the, like, the, they're better at it. But when I first got into government, you had stretches of road that would go unplowed because yeah. the city had one, the township had uh, one stretch. The, the Guilford Road got plowed at, at three different times because different portions belong to different entities of government. Huh. They've since had, they've had to incorporate, um, by intergovernmental agreement, establish a process to be able to get that done. But, the next guy who runs the highway authority might not sign the, the agreement. You know, oh so my you gosh. You guy, this agreement renews in five years, something falls through the cracks, it doesn't get done. And the next major snowfall, you've got 12 inches of snow yeah. over a, a bunch of angry, just, yeah. Angry people. So it's an inefficient system. Um, mm. But knowing that it exists and knowing what the inefficiencies are, mm. <laughs> what's the old eighties, the toys, G.I. Joe, knowing is half the battle. Just <laughs> yep. knowing yep. Is, like, it removes the anxiety. Yeah. Like doesn't doesn't eliminate anxiety, but yeah. at least it makes it manageable. So you're like, okay, yeah. I, I understand what the problem is and I know that there's a, a group of people that have to be called. And if you get stuck, just give me a call, it's fine. That's awesome. Who are you going to call? We'll do the who are you going to call campaign, John Guevara. <laughs> Maybe a little Ghostbust, Ghostbusters. Yeah. We'll have a nice little, hey, hey I'm, I'm ready to answer the phone. The phone is ready. Yeah, here, whoever so. owns the uh, Ghostbusters intellectual property property will send us a cease and desist <laughs> with that campaign. But it'll be fun while it lasts. And then we'll post it on yeah. TikTok to say, look, we got the cease and desist from the Ghostbusters. <laughs> who are you going to call? That's awesome. Man, I, I will agree if I get a cameo in the next yeah, movie. Yeah, get Bill Murray to come out. And <laughs> That's so funny. I'm, I'm going to break. Uh, you can talk directly to um, that camera. Okay. Yeah, that camera. You can talk in. Well, I change because uh, we're going to pause for sponsor. I'm going to throw on a t-shirt so our folks don't want to see my you know, hairy chest. Uh, so I'm going to throw on our sponsor's t-shirt. Well, John is going to tell you uh, what you can do, the, the fast, easy steps. I think the easiest thing really is just to follow you subscribe to your your content and uh, i'm going to be working with you i'm more than happy if you'll have me to to push fun entertaining engaging stuff that is going to move the dial forward and you know from everything from fixing potholes to whatever we can do to make this an awesome place to live because there, we're so close mm. we're so close and i have so many ideas that like we're gonna have fun so yeah. so tell our viewers i'm gonna change into mo's cafe shirt and i'll be right back okay and i want to uh, thank uh, mo's cafe as well um i, I tried to uh, sample their um pakistani omelet and pakistani breakfast this morning they were both delicious um it, it's it's a wonderful place uh, certainly an eclectic um a spot in and in, in downtown rockford um it's on mulberry not far from uh from the new library it's uh, actually if you remember where the old rockford roasting uh, coffee uh, place was it's just right around the corner um, so if you walk you know down main uh, down main and take a ride on mulberry it's right over there um, wonderful wonderful folks and uh, the food was excellent so strongly encourage you to stop by and and, uh, and, and try that place out <clears throat> um, from a just a, a local standpoint it's 
it's like being involved in your community or being more engaged in your community is like reading. If you just, you know, said, find out the things that you like. What are the things that you like about your community? Whether it's, um, you know, helping small businesses or getting, becoming aware of different things that are, are, are going on, knowing about all of the festivals or whatever. Um, just getting involved in some way with something locally. Um, start in the places that you, your kids like going to the Discovery Center. They've got um, different flyers and brochures about what they do and, and how, the, how it works. Just you know what? I like this. I enjoy being here. Maybe I should know a little bit more. Yeah. That's the first step. Second step is to, you know, then start signing up for stuff, you know, just say, Hey, how do we get involved? How do we do, you know, take an extra hour, two hours a month to just engage. Um, and then the third thing is to just, you know, set those, f figure out what your goals are and just set them and try to hit them every month. You know, yep. We're just doing these two things. Um, you know, we don't rise to the level of our goals. We fall to the level of our systems. And when we systematize, um, you know, community, when we, you know, every little thing, you know, it, it, it's, it's been a challenge in the last year, um, really the last six months, because I've, I've gone through a, a divorce and my wife and I have um, two beautiful kids. And so you have to create new systems. You have to build new things so that, that life and everything works, works out. Um, and, uh, I found that you know when when there's not a partner to rely on, you have to become better at building um, systems and setting expectations because it's a whole lot easier for kids if you know there's some structure, and so that's been super important for me. And it was a challenge, um, especially as as a younger man. I mean, I, I was I was shuffled from program to program, um, you know, from football um, that was very structured to wrestling, which was structured to work. You know, I, we started our own business. I was 13 years old, 12 years old, somewhere in there. And, um, you know, everything, you know, it was a system. School was obviously a system. Um, and when you get away from that, um, something gives. And, you know, you, you start down a road of bad habits. I, I, I was a smoker for a long, long time. I didn't quit until 2016. Um, tried several times. It just, just didn't, didn't stick. Um, and, I mean... You know, you, you go from eating, you know, 3,000, 4,000 calories a day, but you're playing football and you're 17. Life is still great until you're no longer 17 and then all, and you're not burning those calories at all. Yeah. And hanging out with your football buddies. Like I used to, I didn't play football, but I hung out with the football players and we would challenge each other at the buffets mm -hmm. and we'd be like, how many plates can you eat? <laughs> and dudes would try to try to cheat and they would just fill up a plate with like just rice and like this counts and I, um, I love food, obviously it shows. Um, but, um, I, I want to just briefly touch on the entrepreneurial spirit within you. You're a very hard worker. You're very focused. You, you're disciplined yeah, you can do what most people can't. In my opinion, I could never do your job. I would jump out a friggin' window. <laughs> God bless you for it. Mm -hmm. But what having an entrepreneurial spirit and starting a business, uh, I was the same way selling magazines that I made at, at 10 years old to my friends. Um, when did you decide to shift from entrepreneurial stuff to, you know, being a public servant? And, you know, I, I don't know what the culture and lifestyle is like, but I imagine it's vastly different than the Playboy CEOs, you know, flying on jets and hanging out with Leonardo DiCaprio and pool parties. It's probably not a lifestyle like that. No, I, it's, um, it, it's it's very thankless, I would, I yeah, would assume. The, you know, I had a, a pastor growing up who used to say that um, pa being a pastor was like farming. Um, and, and there's really only, um, you know, six words or, yeah, six words that describe it. And that's plot on, plot on, plot on. Um, mm -hmm. And I, getting into public service, I thought if we take like 20 minute breaks after each set of plot ons, that's kind of what it is. Um, and that can, that can be frustrating. What I discovered, I had no interest in the nuts and bolts of governing. I had only interest in theoretical systems and what systems worked best and, and was the American system the best system that, that existed. Um, I ended up leaving thinking that it was going to be hard to replace the American system because of its uniqueness and its implementation. Its implementation was simply better than any others. Um, there are other systems that might be better and there are generally more accepted. The, the British parliamentary system is more widely accepted form of republicanism in the world than the U.S. system. The U.S. system has never been duplicated. It is, it is, really? it is unique. Yeah. There is no system of checks and balances that has That's a crazy. lifetime appointed judiciary with um, a, a president who serves not only 
um, the, the state functions, the functions of, of a sovereign, so to speak, and governing functions. Because America has been going functions. hard with its thing, like for the most part, since what, 1776? Mm -hmm. Is that like the, the, the meat and potatoes of the way it's, this country is governed? The freedom um, was declared in 1776, and, and the Constitution was written and ratified in 1789. So our system, we tried a different system. We tried a, a um, what the really? EU is right now. Um, so the EU is kind of, they're, they're sovereign countries, but they, they're, they work in a confederation. Federation. And that's what the first government in, in, in the Americas was. Um, it was the Articles of Confederation, and each state was its own independent individual country, and they mutually agreed to kind of work together. Okay. Um, it was a, it was just, just an abysmal failure um, to the point, but they couldn't get in. It was like the Coke II of, of it government. Was, it was the Coke II of government. They, they <laughs> couldn't figure out how to, how to levy taxes that could, could make it an economic power. Um, they, they couldn't figure out how to prosecute criminals across state lines. Like, you know, if, if you stole a thousand dollars worth of goods in Maryland and ran to Virginia over the border, there was no happen. way to, to manage that. You or go into people. international waters. And yeah, it, it, it was, it, it's just shockingly inefficient. And um, throughout this entire time, George Washington and other guys who had been part of the revolution were retired. And so they said, hey, um, obviously we need to, you know, let's tweak this a little bit. Let's find a way to tweak it. And they talked about ideas on how to do that. Um, all of these guys had deep um, educations in um, classical history, the Roman Republic and, and the Greek democracies, um, as well as philosophy, John Locke, Montesquieu, and different you know, French and, and English philosophers from the 15th and 16th centuries. So they had specific concepts of freedom, and they understood government systems. And then they said, well, what are the problems that we face and how do we address them? And they designed the American system to answer specific problems that they had. And just th this is our solution. Our solution is we have a sovereign, but he's elected every four years. He's not popularly elected so that you, know, you don't run into the problems that the Greek democracies had. And... Um, but you have a, a system, and this person also is in charge of the military, and, but they have specific power, so they can't be a tyrant, right? Yeah. You've got a legislature. They're responsible for spending the money and making decisions on peace. So, well, decisions on peace aren't immediate. They have to be long thinking. So that's the Senate. They have longer terms, and they're, just, they're elected differently. At least they were then. Mm -hmm. And if the, the money's more immediate, you need shorter terms. You need a house that's popularly elected that addresses yeah. the immediate dem democratic issues. So it, it's... This is this, wild stuff. It's fascinating. I didn't know there was a cult too of government in America. I could, spend, <laughs> I could spend days talking about Okay, this. I'll reel it in because you're, get, you're getting excited about this, I can yeah. tell. Let's, do, let's reel it into uh, something relevant and a sense of urgency. Uh, we have an election coming up. We're not going to name names of candidates because sure. I feel people get riled up. Yeah. They just hear the name of a candidate and it triggers them, mm -hmm. you know, whatever emotions that come up, it is what it is. People, you know, we can't really control our emotions uh, for the most part, which I have a book that I'm writing that hopefully we can try to control our emotions, but mm -hmm. we will just refer them to as the Republican Party for now mm -hmm. and Democratic Party just to make it simple for people. Sure. Uh, so there's talk in the streets of my friends because a lot of my friends see things with the Republican Party a certain way. And I feel everyone is just misinformed, confused, and maybe you can help clarify people so that you, we can make a more of an educated decision uh, come November uh, or whenever the election is. I don't even know when the election is. How, how bad first is Tuesday in November following first the first Tuesday, Monday. So. First Tuesday in November. Yeah. Yeah, so make so, sure you, you all vote uh, for our next president of this country. I think that I think this year it's November fourth, but whatever okay. it's it's always it's always the first Tuesday following the first Monday in November. So it, it can yeah. be uh, as far as I think the eighth or the ninth, maybe the eighth. I think yeah. So one year was the eighth, and you're like, boy, that's not the first Tuesday, but it's because the first was on a the first of November was a Tuesday, and there was no November day before that october 31st was the monday so then it had the election fell this is kind of around halloween like i'm surprised there's yeah. never been like a halloween kind of thing with elections nobody's yeah. dressed up I, i've no not seen a, I, you'll see trick-or-treating sometimes like halloween's you, such a fun holiday it's my favorite back, one of my favorites yeah if you if you go back and look um the, the, there'll be trick-or-treaters at the white house um uh, i'm, I'm <laughs> confident they did it during the reagan and, and bush administrations i'm sure they did it um 
I'm, I'm, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure every president's in, uh, had trick or treat. How does that work? Out. Like the Secret Service is just like go away, or like uh, most of the time it's kids of staff. Oh, okay. It's yeah. it's not just you know. It's, it's not the it, civilians. Yeah, it, it'd and, be it'd be interesting uh, if, if it's if just they internal. Open. Yeah. Well, and 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 now post it might have been. 40, 50 years ago that it was open to the public. I mean, when Abraham Lincoln was president, they literally just had a day where people walked into the White House into his office and his, his sec he had two secretaries, um, John Nicolay and John Hay, and those guys would just bring people in and they just tell them what their problems were. You know? That's awesome. Yeah. So I have so much respect for Abraham Lincoln, by the way. I mean, I, I, in hindsight, I know, this guy what also I've got, you know, I mean, he was assassinated. So you, when you think of it, you think, man, the access might have been a bad idea. Um, but most yeah. of us didn't like. But that was a uh, the public theater, or was the, it was, it was a, a private the John theater? Ford Theater? It was a public theater. He, okay, he sat in his box. So no was, security, no Secret Service. He no had an armed entourage. Uh, he had a Union Army guy with him, but it was the you know the guy who shot him was the actor, the lead actor at that theater in the play. I did come. not know that. Yeah, John Wilkes Booth he was, was an a actor? famous actor. It'd be, it'd be like Brad Pitt walking up to uh, Joe Biden and right. blasting him in the back of the head. He was an actor? It, for real. How did like, I not know this? Famous, famous um, actor. Just this Not famous enough. Or, <laughs> apparently, if I haven't heard of the guy. It's been over. Yeah, or heard of his career. Yeah. Obviously, I've heard yeah. of John Wilkes Booth, but like no, no, I have no, zero no, recollection of yeah, his, yeah. his performances, what he starred in. One of the... My favorite political movie is is Lincoln. It was done by Steven Spielberg. Lincoln was played by um, uh, Daniel um, Day Lewis, and it's yeah, two it's, minutes, yeah, two minutes. Up. Phenomenal film. It's hard to watch because they, they use language from the era. Mm. Um, but the closest I've seen people to portraying Lincoln and, and giving you a feel for how he was. Um, and just this process of thinking through things, mm. it's, it's remarkable. I heard he would sleep um, for days at a time, and, and he suffered from manic uh, depressive episodes. Well, he he lost two kids. Um, That'll and, mess you up. And, yeah. and, and there's there's a reference. There's a two minutes in the movie where he talks about his feelings in that in that space, and mm. says. I don't have the luxury of doing the things that I want to do. When he describes what he wants to do, and you're like. You're, I get it, man. I would totally cuts do that. through you. Yeah, it, yeah. it just it, it just, I see it just cuts deep. It's a, it's a wonderful yeah. film. Um, so so to bring it back to 2024 election, um, my my question for you is: uh, in two minutes or less, do your best. I know it's a challenge, but educate voters on the wild rumors of a 900 percent tax raise by so and so, mm -hmm. and then so and so like eliminating things, and then just being able to like arrest whoever they want. All these wild rumors like the, where is this coming from it, 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 what is we this? live in the travel society and folks are are, are are kind of baying at the moon the short answer is um there's no evidence from 2016 to 2020 that um the, the things that were done on, uh, during that administration um would that, that this new administration would be any different um, and there were a lot of things that were done that made some sense, increase the tax, child tax credit, more efficient government, um, eliminating some people in government who kind of made a career out of gaming the system in Washington. Um, some of those things are good. And, and, and it might be that, you know, as much of a difficult individual as the Republican candidate has been and can be, um, things got done during that period of time. Gas prices were low. There were the shelves were stocked. The on, on the other hand, you have somebody who is more likable on, on the Democrat side than the Republican, um, and um, is has set some expectations for good things that will happen. But then also, you know, is talking about price controls, and you know, price controls in Venezuela are the reason why the dictator's getting kicked out if he can't keep control of the army because there's no food on the shelves, mm. um, and and. Again, these are things that we think about, um, and maybe it's an election day thing. But you know, when CNN is saying this is a bad idea, um, CNN's not rapidly Republican. So yeah. I, I I thought that was a an an interesting indicator, um, and certainly something to to. At the end of the day, you've got someone who's been there for four years, and there hasn't been a lot that's that's been happening um, that you can say, hey. Are my bills any lower? Are my bills staying the same? Am I making more money? Um, I don't know that that's the case. So then, then it becomes how do I feel and not what's happening. On the other side, um, you have to vote for what you think is you know mm -hmm. a good track record, but you have to get over how you feel about. Yeah, that, you got to set your emotions aside. You know, what's what's good for your fellow there, neighbor? There's a lot of perceptions for you? about Republicans that they're all a bunch of old white guys. I'm a 45 year old 
you know, Mexican American um, who has been Republican for 20 years. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I was neither old nor, nor white when I became Republican. Yeah. So um, th that's, that's not something that, um, that, that holds water. Um, but uh, I'm also not somebody who um, is, is going to drink the Kool-Aid when I, when I think. Yeah. Don't drink the Kool-Aid kids. Kool-Aid's for uh, lunch period, not the voting. Uh, right. Right. Um, my, I'll, I'll wrap with my thoughts. Um, I'm for anyone who will bring this country together. And I have not seen that from certain parties and I don't know enough, but I'm just going with my gut. Um, I'm voting Democrat because I, I feel they're doing a somewhat better job of bringing people together. I don't understand or know all of the, the nuances of it, but I'm just like, okay, let's give her a shot. It's going to make history. The first female president. Um, you know, let's, let's give her a shot. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that's, that's my personal stance, you know, everything emotions aside, if I just like looked at the data and stuff and I'd be like, okay, you know, you, your qualifications meet the standard that the, the candidates that qualified, right? Cause she, she's coming from a I history mean, of a vice presidency. Yeah. The, the, the argument of qualification is unique. Like the constitution doesn't say much other than you, you're a natural born citizen. You're that's it. Age of 35. Yeah. That's it. That's it. How did like all of this like hinge on just where you were born? <laughs> um, well, you, you have to be a, a, <laughs> a yeah, it's, it's a natural born citizen. Uh, no one knows what that means. Like, n d d does that mean natural birth? Does that mean uh, a, a natural born citizen is somebody who was born in in the United States? Yeah. If you were born like John McCain was born in the Panama Canal Zone, hmm. does that count? So that's Panama that's Canal the qualification at the time where, that he where was you born, were born. The, the Panama Canal Zone was. You've heard it here, folks. States. That's your qualification. <laughs> your Any bare of minimum. you over thirty-five, over thirty-five, if you were born here, if you were born in this country, you yeah. can be president. Or in the U.S. Virgin All Islands, you got it. Puerto Virgin Rico. Islands, Puerto Rico, Alaska, yeah. Samoa, I Hawaii. Think, Samoa does not be right. What, what about like an embassy or like our, our, our over, overseas, like a Guam, like a, like a military base? Military base is uh, no, military base. Babies. Military base is on is on foreign soil. Uh, um, a if you're born at a embassy, that's considered U.S. soil. Cool. All right. All you embassy babies, you, you got a shot. So. <laughs> <laughs> cool. All right. Uh, that's a good wrapping point. Did you want to uh, uh, sit in for a little, uh, for a few minutes uh, to meet with Laura Kane of Marshmallows Hope? Or do you, you got know, I, I, I would, but I've got, I've got uh, appointments okay. uh, throughout the rest of the day. All so, right, John. And the zoning committee tonight. So I'll be Pleasure. occupied. Thanks, Frank. All right. Thank you.